I'm going to record. Welcome. Uh, this is um, Math 4201 Abstract Algebra. Uh, I'm going to start by introducing myself. I'm, I'm Moises. Um, I'm the teacher for this class, as you might guess. Uh, and what should, you, what should I tell you about me? I'm a postdoc in the LSU Math Department. I've been um, here, this is my second year here, although I don't know if the last year and a half counts, honestly, because I haven't set foot in the department in a while. Um, so, um, well, my email, you can find on my website. Um, my office hours, I'm going to, I'm going to have after class on Mondays and before class on Wednesdays in this Zoom meeting. And then really there's three office hours a week. Uh, so if any of those times will work, you should just tell me. Um, you, you can always, we can also meet at basically any other time if you, if you ask me in advance. Um, if you just email me and ask me to meet, I'll happily meet with you. Um, my office is 102 in Lockett Hall, but I'm, you're never going to find me there. So it doesn't matter. Um, and what else do I say? Um, I'm from Spain. So uh, I've, been, I've been in the US for, I'm losing track. Uh, this is my seventh year in the US. Uh, I spent the first five years uh, that I was here in Wisconsin doing my PhD. And then I moved to Louisiana. Um, I should say, I, I feel like uh, this is a math class, you probably care. Uh, I So what I like to do, my research is, is on algebra. Um, it's uh, an algebraic geometry, which is basically studying polynomials, which is what this one is about. Okay, uh, so now I'm gonna, I'm going to ask you to, okay, so, um, so this course, uh, let me go around here so I don't, I don't forget. So, uh, you should start with the organizational stuff. Okay, so, uh, the lectures. So lectures are going to be here. Um, hopefully, the two people that uh, are not here will find this place um, by Wednesday. Anyway, my so what's my plan? My plan is sort of well to present stuff. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to write on a on a Jamboard, and I'll share the screen so you can see it. And also, you're going to have the link um, if you go to Moodle. Um, you will see. Uh, you will see. Not the notes. Um, you will see a Google Drive link. And it should be open for everyone to see. And, and here you're going to see all the. Um, all the, so all the, all the notes. So if you go into the Google document, the nice thing is you can go back and forth in the pages by yourself. The definition might be a bit better. Um, I don't know, you can zoom in. You, it allows you to do things. And also they'll be saved later. So you can, you can go through them later as well. Um, so during class, um, you, you should, Feel free to jump in at any moment. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you a lot of questions, honestly, because um, well, for, because this is the second part of a course, and I guess the first question I have uh, is I assume is 4200 a prerequisite? I think it is. Um, did you take it last semester, every one of you? Yes, I, I did. Okay, so. Um, the, I probably at the beginning had a lot of questions off of uh, did you see this or do you remember? I guess if you if you saw it and doesn't and don't remember, uh, for practical purposes, it is the same as if you didn't see it. Um, 
So um, anyway, you should be, feel free to jump in at any moment. You have a question. Um, also, I hope that you participate so that because I mean, watching me go on for an hour on your screen is exhausting. I mean, I watch I watch math talks on Zoom as well, and I know it's exhausting firsthand. Hopefully, it can be a bit it can be a bit better if you know it's sort of it's more of a conversation. So, um, uh, so you can you can also write in the chat if you have a question. I know uh, I'm I'm going to do my best to see it, but um, noticing the chat is a lot harder uh, than just listening. So I prefer if you I prefer if you just speak up. Um, oh, welcome, Duncan. Um, so, okay. Um, I think that's all I got to say about the lectures. Um, so, um, what's next? Okay, the, the textbook. Um, so we're using uh, Judson's text because all the texts are pretty similar. Um, and this one, oh, oops, wrong link. To fix that. Um, and this one is free. And I thought um, I might as well make you pay no money. So so it's here. It's You can see it here in like a, a web sort of version. Um, you can read it in Spanish uh, if you feel like it, apparently. Um, and it's also there's also a PDF somewhere in this website. And another another book that people have used in the past is Nicholson's text, um, at least from what I the professors have talked to. And we sort of cover the same the same thing. Nicholson sort of goes into a lot of goes into a lot more topics in this text, um, a lot more tangents and things that are potentially interesting, but it is a lot of stuff. I assume if you were, full, I don't know what book you were using last semester, but I assume you the semesters when people have used it, they they don't cover absolutely everything in the book because it is a lot. Um, yes, Nicholson. So, what did you, in terms of chapters, what did you cover? Do you remember? I think we covered up to polynomial rings. Okay. So all of chapter three. So chapter three is what I care about the most. Um, we covered like up into the uh, Eisenstein theorem. The Eisenstein theorem. Um, oh wait, so including in chapter four, uh, the Eisenstein's criterion. Yeah, we we did a couple of sections of uh, chapter oh. four. I don't I don't think we did the whole thing though. Oh wow. So you went into okay. Okay, so I guess I'm going to start with, I guess, um, the first week is going to be a review. Um, so, I mean, ugh. okay, I'll, I'll look through it later. Uh, because I, I'm, one, one thing, I feel comfortable recording an image of Justin's text. Um, because it's free, but I don't want to get sued by Nicholson for uh, showing the, his text. Okay, uh, cool. So um, I think the maybe we're up to an easy start. Okay, um, so I might, I'm, I'm going to be looking at Nicholson's text as well, um, but it doesn't mean you have to use it, especially it doesn't mean you have to buy it. Um, you're all math major, so I assume you, you know where to find textbooks. Um, I'm not going to say anything more about that, at least on, on the record. Uh, okay, so uh, the grades. So there's gonna be there's gonna be homework, uh, written homework, um, and there's gonna be uh, three exams. So um, and that's the the breakdown of the of the grade. So the homework. Um, so the homework. I'm gonna write some problems every two weeks, and you'll have to solve them uh, since you're all in one way or another math majors you know you probably know how it goes you need to write all your reasoning uh you know i don't want to see 
unless the problem is super easy, um, a solution is not just a bunch of formulas with no explanation, right? It's math, math proofs are mostly sentences um, and not formulas. Um, so, um, you know, you need to justify everything. Uh, you can you can use stuff in books if you reference it. Um, but basically, other than that, you need to explain everything you do. You need to write proofs. Uh, so you're going to hand them in through grade school, which is um, you might have used. Um, so I believe I've sent you an, an email invitation to the course. Um, so you should have received received it. But anyway, um, you'll see your assignments here. And then you just, uh, me, when I assign something, I'll show you. But you just upload either pictures from your phone, as long as they're legible, or a scan, a, a PDF or something. Uh, and then you you just, you only need, only, all you need to do is choose which problem is in which photo. Uh, you don't have to type it at all. Um, if you know, if you know LaTeX, uh, I mean, if you feel like practicing LaTeX, you can type it, but it's not a requirement at all. Uh, and if you don't know LaTeX, if I were you, I really wouldn't type it because typing math and word is a huge pain. Um, so, um, so that will be every two weeks. Um, and about the grading, I wrote the syllabus before learning that I was going to have a grader. Uh, so, so unless it's very time-consuming for the grader, I think you're going to have feedback on all the problems. Um, but still, half the grade is going to be uh, just on completion. So, if you turn in every problem, you get half half the points for free, and then the other half are based on actually seeing if your work is correct. Um, okay. Oh, I should say, um, so you can work, you can talk to each other and I encourage you to talk to each other. Um, so, um, the only, basically the only rule is you have to do your own work and you have to hand in your own work. So even if you work as a group, you can't hand in your work as a group or you can't hand in an identical problem to someone else. Um, because you, you can't copy uh, your work from someone, but you can definitely talk to someone about uh, how to solve a problem. And then um, and then just go, go off and write your own solution based on your discussion. Uh, you should say who you work with because, you know, if you, if I ask you for an example of a thing and, and two people write the exact same thing, it's fine. It's fine if you say you you got it from working together. Uh, it's less fine if I have to believe it's a miracle of magic, and you don't. Of course, working in groups doesn't do anything bad to your brain. Um, probably it's probably good for you. Uh, you can also you're also free to come to come to me in in office hours or after class and ask me for help with the problems. Um, and I probably will help you. Um, I will do my best to not solve it for you. But uh, you know, if I accidentally do, then I guess um, I guess you're you are lucky. Uh, there's also I made a piazza form for which I think you've also gotten invitations. Um, so um, anyway, this is. This is also a place for you to um, to ask questions, uh, and it's very easy to just go here, write a new post, and write a question, and I'll answer it. And I I much rather you do this than ask me in an email, uh, because I mean if you if you have a, a personal question, you know like I'm sick something, you don't need to ask on Piazza. But if you have a question like how do you do problem two. I'd rather everyone see it, um, and that way everyone gets a chance of learning and at answering if you want. So, um, okay, so 
I, if you want to write math questions, I'd much rather you use Piazza. Um, if there's, if I get a lot of questions by email, I might say I'm going to stop answering questions by email. Um, okay. Are there any questions so far? Okay, uh, anyway, feel free to ask them at any point if you have them. Um, okay, so that's it for the assignment. So uh, then there's gonna be exams. So for the exams, I'm just gonna have it in this meeting. Uh, you turn on your cameras in a way that I can see what you're doing. And then you'll get, uh, for the midterms, they'll just be in class. So you will get 15 minutes for them. So it'll be pretty short. And the, the final is going to be the same, but it's two hours. And, and at the end, I'll just, uh, you'll have time to, to upload them to Gradescope or email them to me, I guess. It, you know, if you have, basically, if you have an internet problem, um, you know, uploading the stuff, which is, I think, the biggest concern, as long as you stay in the, in the meeting and I can see that you're not, of getting an exam from someone else, uh, it's fine. So hopefully that will, will avoid problems. Uh, okay. Um, so here I wrote a grading scale. Um, so I guess if this if this ever changes, it will be for your benefit. It will never be um, to lower your grade. Uh, what should I say? Um, okay, um, so I guess I have my academic integrity paragraph, uh, which is there mostly in case I have problems to say that I want you, but you know, your work has to be your own. Um, you should cite everything you use. Um, you, you're allowed to, you know, go on the internet and look for facts that might help you that that's not i mean it's not a super useful thing to do uh, but you're also allowed to discuss with each other which is useful you're just not allowed to go on the internet and ask someone to solve the problem for you um and well uh i also have a statement of inclusivity there which uh, basically says i will not tolerate any any BS of any sort, um, including discrimination for any reason, race, religion, national origin, origin, sexual orientation, gender identity, disability, age, parental status, or any other thing I might have uh, missed. Um, I just I want to I want the environment in class to be um, at the very least respectful, hopefully friendly. Um, okay. I think that's it for for the logistics of everything. So, any questions? Okay. So, what is the class about? Um, so this class, um, well, it's about rings. Um, and you know what rings are, and you probably know what they're good for. Uh, but basically, um, rings, are, rings are good for studying polynomial equations. Um, So, um, so polynomial equations such as um, such as this one, you know, such as uh, such as this one. <clears throat> so, um, 
of course, um, I guess the question you can always have about polynomial equations are what, what are its solutions, but there's a lot of, um, uh, there's a lot of shades, what's the word? I don't know. Um, there, there's a lot of ways to, there's, there's a lot of things, uh, kind of questions in, in that question. For example, if you, if you look at this equation, uh, what are its solutions? Is kind of what what does the answer look like? Uh, is it? I mean, this is the equation of a circle, so there's infinitely many. So, are we satisfied with knowing that there's infinitely many? Uh, do we want to know? Is there some sort of structure like like it's a circle? It has a shape, you know. Um, there's a whole field of math which is asking about the the shape of solutions to polynomial equations, but also are there solutions uh, that are, where, where am I looking for the solutions? Um, am I looking for rational solutions for maybe? Um, so, so then each polynomial equation, you realize you can, you can ask about, you can ask about a lot of kinds of solutions. Um, well, now you know, you can ask for solutions to be in different rings, um, and you can ask, uh, so you can ask a lot of different questions. For example, can I find solutions in a particular ring? Um, you can ask, um, is there a formula for the solutions? So, um, you know perfectly well that if you have um, this, this equation, this is a solution, uh, well, all the solutions, which, of which there still look like uh, this. <clears throat> so if I write, um, x to the fifth minus x minus one. Can I write a formula? Um, and you might know, because this is the thing that gets repeated often, that an equation of degree five has no formula, um, has no formula that gives it solutions. Um, so this is one of the, this is one of the crown jewels of abstract algebra, knowing that, um, that equations of the degree five and higher uh, have no formula. Uh, of course, first you have to even ask what is a formula. Um, so that's hopefully one place that this course is, is going. So, um, so So for example, one of the first things we're gonna prove, unless, I mean, I guess I'll, I'll, I'm gonna go through it. I, I'm, I'm suspecting that you might have seen this last semester. Um, uh, polynomials can be factored uniquely into irreducibles. Um, in the same way that uh, integers can. So natural numbers, as you know, have a unique factorization into primes and there is such a thing as a, as a prime polynomial and every polynomial splits as a product of prime into uh, primes. 
so this is one example of a thing we want to study in this course. Um, another another uh, big theorem in the course is showing that there is exactly one field with p to the n elements for every prime p and natural number or natural numbers I have no horse in the the natural numbers have zero controversy so positive natural number positive integer um this is this is one of my favorite themes this is a really beautiful theorem um so you'll see you might have, you might have seen already that if if a field has a finite number of elements that number is a power of a prime and what you definitely haven't seen is that for any for any prime power like 27 there's a field with 27 elements and there's only one field with 27 every other field um is isomorphic which is a concept you're probably very familiar with from well seeing it from rings groups and fields in algebra one uh, and then the other the other big theorem is that there are no um There is no Quincy formula. Yeah. So I've been told getting to Galois theory is um, pretty hard um, in this in this course. Um, this is the first time I teach it. I teach this course, but that's what other professors have told me. Uh, but I hope we get there because it's um, it's really really beautiful. So. Um, all of these questions have to do, um, sort of have to do with polynomial equations. Um, in, I don't know, you start doing algebra and you, as you know, you start defining all these concepts. You start like talking about uh, ideals and isomorphism theorems and homomorphisms and stuff. Uh, but at the end, um, you kind of everything, most things we we say are just about polynomial equations um like like um like these things are uh, these questions are okay are there any questions okay so let me um let's review a little bit um so um, this class is about rings, um, and and then a bunch of it is about fields, but fields are just rings, um, special kinds of rings. So let's start with rings. So um, uh, what is what is a ring? Um, so. Without without saying a million axioms, um, what is um, sort of in a sentence? What is a ring? What is an example of a ring? The integers. Integers. Um, so, what about the um, what about the integers? Makes them a ring. They're a group under addition and have closure and identity and multiplication. Right. So, um, yeah, exactly. A, a ring is a set where you can add and multiply. And essentially, you have the same the same abstract properties that the integers have. Um, uh, 
another example where you can another example is polynomials um, you can also um, add a multi add subtract and multiply polynomials so um, so what is a ring uh, let me just write it down even though I'm sure uh, you're gonna this is gonna be familiar a ring is a set R with um, to um, binary operations which we write plus and times so binary means um, you add two things the, the, the input is two elements you can't just add one thing and then list it you could say that does nothing but in principle you don't add one thing um with the following properties um so like nick was saying um you need uh it has to be a group under addition a commutative group so uh you have the associative law For um, for addition, you have um, so oof. you have an uh, an identity for addition. So the identity for addition, just like in the integers and polynomials, the real numbers. We call it, we just always call it zero. Um, and the identity does nothing when you add it. Oh, I don't mean your number three. There is um, an inverse. So something that adds uh, adds to zero, and we we write it uh, as the opposite. Um, and finally, it has to be uh, commutative. So I guess these three axioms. Um, make this into a group. Uh, this makes it commutative. And, and then, so that's what addition satisfies. And then multiplication. Uh, satisfy some other things. So multiplication is also associative. And finally, uh, we have the distributive law. Uh, well, let me write in the real numbers. Um, when you multiply and then you add, well, you know what this is? 
you've seen this in elementary school. <clears throat> so that's a ring. Um, and most rings that we care about um, satisfy more properties. Um, I guess I should say, um, another property that is very important um, and usually is gonna be satisfied for everything we care about is that there is a there is a an identity for multiplication which we tend to write one. Uh, there is um, an element one such that for any element in the ring, you multiply them together and you get uh, the same thing. We say R has unity a unity or something or we say you might see also r is unital um and if um and then another property that often happens like for example for the integers or polynomials is that multiplication is also commutative so a b is b a and then we say R is a commutative ring. Okay, um, so <clears throat> I guess if you say a ring in principle, you don't need it to have a unit or to be commuted. I should say, we, we call it commutative. If you say commutative ring, you always, we're always talking about the product because every ring has commutative addition. If, if you have some sort of algebraic, um, some sort of set with operations where the sum is not commutative and it has all the other properties, uh, that's not a ring. I should say I've never seen such a thing in my life. Uh, but if if I saw it, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a ring. It wouldn't be what anyone calls a ring. So if you specify commutative ring, that means that the, the multiplication is commutative. Um, and honestly, um, we we are only going to care about commutative rings with unit. Uh, so I'm I'm just. From, from now on, you can say that all rings are commutative with unit um, for this course. Um, so if I say ring, um, I mean a commutative ring with unit. And if I if I don't want a commutative ring, I'll spe I'll, I'll be specific about that. Okay, so um, so that's what rings are. Are there any questions? Um, does this ring a bell? This is all pretty familiar. All right. Uh, that's what I want to hear. Uh, okay. Well, if it is, and you're free to ask questions, I, I mean, I got three samples saying this is familiar. Okay. So, um, so what are examples of rings? How many? Um, oh, should I? Um, nah, there's nothing. I there are infinitely many examples of rings, but I kind of want to play a game where everyone says a ring and see who's the first person to to repeat. So when you're when you're studying, I guess I think probably all math, but it's particularly useful for, for algebra. It's it's very important just for you, for your own for your own efficiency learning to have a bunch of examples handy. This is super important. Like when you when you want to prove a thing, even if the thing is true. Uh, and it follows some, some sort of abstract proof, which often happens. 
having examples to test whether you think a thing is true is, is vital. Um, so what are examples of rings? Um, I wrote to, let's see how many we can, we can name. I hope we have more. The complex numbers? The complex numbers. OK, so while we're here, I'm going to throw in the real numbers and the rational numbers. Um, so essentially, everything, everything we think of as numbers are examples of rings. So what are other examples? Um, Matrices. Um, matrices have a specific size with real entries. Um, so, Is this what you? Um, oh, I got you. Uh, this is not what you meant, Nick. Um, okay, Duncan said one element field. I'll get I'll get into that in a second. Um, so um, this is uh, I wrote something. So the matrices of size n, n times m are not are not a ring. What's wrong with, um, why is this not a ring? Oops. Oops, because I, they have to be square for identity. Okay, but I mean, it could be a ring without identity. Because the identity matrix is a square. Um, so you're saying it's not commutative. It could be non-commutative. I mean, I'm saying, I'm not saying non-commutative rings don't exist. I'm just saying we're not gonna look at them a lot. Um, so, uh, well, um, if M and N are different, right, then uh, the not any multiplication is, will exist. It won't be closed under multiplication. Right, there's, right. yeah, Alex, that's, yeah, exactly. Uh, you can only, uh, you can only multiply matrices whose side size um, matches. Uh, you need, you know, N cross M, and then you need M cross something else. Um, okay, so um, square matrices are a ring. And I know, I mean, I know that's what you meant, but I'm gonna, one thing, well, first thing, first fact is that I'm gonna make mistakes and you should, uh, I mean, definitely, if you catch them, you should tell me about them. And sometimes I might just make mistakes on purpose, uh, just to you know, just to stay awake. Uh, and sometimes I'll make a real mistake and then claim that it was on an accident. Uh, and I don't know, maybe you'll find out, maybe you won't. Sorry, make a real mistake, claim I was just testing you. Um, so square matrices are a ring, uh, even though they're non-commutative, but it's still a it's still an example. Um, and then I guess a very not very exciting example, although probably probably a useful example. I don't know uh, the zero ring, which is just a ring has one element. Uh, zero plus zero is zero. Zero times zero is zero, and not much to do with it. Um, <clears throat> this is, I mean, pretty, it's a pretty boring ring. It's as boring as the empty set, I think. Um, okay, and this is not a field. Um, 
we sort of, I mean, by definition, a field must have two elements at least. Um, uh, it just doesn't have any nice property that a field has. So we hate it. And if you hear anyone saying field with one element, um, you should ask them what they mean because they never mean this. Okay. Um, all right, that's all. So I'll see you back on Wednesday. I'll post, post some homework for, our, for two weeks from now. And well, well uh, my office hours are officially starting right now.